All right, welcome to this presentation of the structure and argument of Hebrews. I suppose what we're going to do just to get us started is the idea of the thought world of Hebrews. And just so you um, have a uh, that if you know that you might want to have the PDF of the structure and argument of Hebrews before you as we go through this. But this idea of the thought world of Hebrews is going to help us Hebrews is going to help us as we think about um, what is going on in the mind of the author. What is the author trying to get across in this way? But um, when we think about the thought world of Hebrews, we have to understand that in Second Temple Judaism, there was an understanding that the world was, you had these two worlds, in some ways they paralleled, but there was the world in which God lived and existed, and um, that would be the heavenly realms, and that there is the realm in which humans reside, and that would be the earthly realm. And there's much talk in Second Temple literature about the idea of how these two worlds intersected, or, or whether they did, and how they did, and how it was that God was revealing himself in the earthly realm. So that this idea of the heavenly realm coming to bear in the earthly, or how is God revealing himself in the earthly realm. And in this world, there were a number of intermediaries that filled these gaps. Um, some of them would come from God, that God himself would send people for, or send beings from the heavenly realm to reveal what God is like. And, um, and angels would be those that are these kind of semi-divine uh, intermediaries sent from God as messengers. The word angels means messengers. And the tradition was in Second Temple Judaism, and we see um, echoes of this in script, Scripture, is that the angels were the ones who deliver the law, God's revelation to humanity in that way. But also that God was choosing uh, from the human earthly realm intermediaries to rise up out of the human ranks. And so you would have people like Moses, who was a priest and a prophet. And you had other leaders um, like uh, Joshua, or you would have Aaron, or you, and out of Aaron you would have Levi in terms of priests. And you had all of these intermediaries, um, and that priests would then offer out of the earthly realm sacrifices, animal sacrifices. And that this world of intermediaries was the means by which humans related to God and that God revealed himself to the earthly realm and humans. And what we're going to find is that um, when we think about this thought world of Hebrews, it gives us some indication of what the argument of the, of the book of Hebrews is and a little bit of the structure of the book of Hebrews. And what we're going to find is that the main thesis statement of the author of Hebrews is that Jesus is superior to or greater than all of these intermediaries. And so chapters 1 and 2, Jesus is superior to angels. And we find that the message that Jesus delivers in chapter 2, that the word that we have heard uh, is, um, we have to pay closer attention to that, the message that Jesus gave, because the first message had its own consequences, but how will we escape if we neglect such a great salvation as it was proclaimed by the Lord? So when we think back to the, the ultimate thesis statement that in the past, God has spoke to the fathers through the prophets in many portions and in many ways, but in these last days, he has spoken in a son. And this idea that Jesus the son, Jesus the son, the heir, the firstborn, is the perfect revelation of who God is. He is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature. So we have in chapter 1, 1 through 4, really the thesis statement of the entire book. And what we're going to find out is that this whole book is going to play out as Jesus is shown to be greater than angelic intermediaries. He is, and in chapter 3, he's greater than Moses. Moses was a servant. Jesus is a son. We also find out that th there's a failure in Moses and the Exodus generation to enter into rest, that Joshua did not give them rest, and that he launches then in to talk about high priests starting in chapter 4 and chapter 5, and these high priests, that Jesus is not a Levitical priest. He is a Melchizedekian priest, and he is a priest 
a better priest than the Levites. That he is, the reason he's a better priest is he offers, uh, he offers himself as a sacrifice. He's a better sacrifice. And he does so, and this is important, this is a very important idea, is that this idea that the heavenly and earthly realms intersected at a certain spot, and in, in many ways that spot is, and this is a bad drawing of a tabernacle, but that's what it is, I suppose, uh, is that Jesus not only go, doesn't go into the tabernacle that is made or pitched by human hands, he goes into the real tabernacle, the actual taber, the what God has set up. That we find out that um, we do not arrive at this this mountain of fear and trembling, uh, where the where the law was given. We actually walk into the city of God, Jerusalem by means of Jesus, who has passed through the heavenly realms and the heavenly tabernacle, and that he has made the way in that way. And so hopefully this gives us a good idea of the argument of the book of Hebrews, with 1, 1 through 4 being the thesis statement, and then playing out in chapter 3 with Moses, chapter 4, Joshua, uh, we see Aaron and Levi, 5 through 7, the Melchizedekian priests, as well as the sacrifices in chapter 9, and 10, as well as he has inaugurated a new covenant. So these are all Jesus and what he has done is greater than all these intermediaries because he is the perfect revelation of who God is. And that, in a nutshell, is the argument of Hebrews. And you can look at the outline in light of this thought world.